This video defines divergence of a vector field in three dimensions. Informally, if the vector field f represents the velocity of a fluid, then the divergence of f at the point x, y, z represents the net flow from the point x, y, z. I've drawn two example vector fields below. These vector fields are drawn in two dimensions, and to calculate divergence, we need a vector field in three dimensions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume the vector field in three dimensions looks like this two-dimensional vector field for each horizontal slice. So here's the equation for f. Notice that it doesn't depend on z. This would be the way the vector field looks at z equals zero, and it looks exactly like this when z equals one or two or three. So I'd like to think about this vector field and decide if the divergence of the vector field at the origin is positive, negative, or zero. Notice that the arrows are all pointing horizontally inward and getting smaller and smaller as we go towards the origin. If I were to put some kind of net ball around the origin and look at the fluid, the fluid is flowing into the ball. So there's net accumulation or net flow into the origin. That means that the divergence is going to be negative because a positive divergence means the fluid is flowing out from the point. And here we're doing the opposite, we're flowing in towards the origin. So that's a negative divergence. For the second example, the arrows are going round in circles. So we're kind of circulating around the origin, but if I made my little ball of netting, there would be no net flow into or out of that ball around the origin. And therefore, the divergence of the vector field at the origin is going to be zero. Now that we've got an intuition for what divergence means, let's write down the mathematical formula. For a vector field f, written with components p, q, and r, the divergence of f is defined as d dx p plus d dy q plus d dz of r. Often this definition is written with the shorthand notation gradient dotted with f where the gradient is meant to be this d dx, d dy, d dz. Now the gradient operator is not really a vector, but this notation is really handy to help remember the definition because if you now write the gradient dotted with f formally, and just write out the symbols without thinking too much, without worrying too much about what they mean, what they could possibly mean, if you just write it out formally and then do the sort of formal dot product kind of smushing together d dx times p, it's not really times, I guess it's of, d dy, smush that together with q, d dz, smush that together with r, you get the definition of divergence. So this notation you'll see a lot and it really is a handy mnemonic to remember the formula for divergence. Notice that the divergence of f gives you a scalar quantity, not a vector. Let's think for a minute why this formula might give you a positive answer when the flow of a fluid is out from a point and give you a negative answer when the flow of a fluid is into a point. If you have fluid flowing out from a point, kind of in a starburst kind of formation, notice that I'm making those vectors get be really small near the origin so the vector field will be continuous at the origin, and then they can get bigger as I go further out. Now if I look at d dx of p, that's the rate at which the x component of my vector field is changing as I increase x. If I look at these arrows over here, they have a positive x component, but that positive x component is getting bigger and bigger. So the x component of my vector field is increasing. In other words, d dx of p is positive. Similarly, if I look up in this direction, the y component of my vectors is positive and increasing, so d dy of q is positive. And if we imagine the starburst happening in the z direction too, as we go up in the z direction, the z component of our vectors will be positive and increasing, so d dz of r will be positive. Even if we look like along this direction, where the x components of our vectors are negative, and they're getting more and more negative as we go 
in the negative x direction, but of course ddx means you have to go in the positive x direction. So they're getting they're negative but getting less and less negative as I go this way, which means ddx of p is still increasing. So thinking about the intuition with a starburst, you can see that that these for a starburst going fluid flowing out of a point, these three quantities should be positive and you'll get a positive divergence. And a similar argument shows that if a, intuitively that if you have a, a vector field kind of collapsing into um, a black hole center kind of thing, then you'll get a, a divergence that is negative because your, your ddx of the x component will be negative and so on for the y component and z component. So that's my explanation for why this formula agrees with our intuition for divergence as measuring the net fluid flow out from a point. So now let's use the formula for divergence to actually compute the divergence in the two examples we saw at the beginning. So remember the divergence is the gradient dotted with the vector field. I'll write that out. And that means that I take d dx of negative x plus d dy of negative y plus d dz of zero. So that's going to be negative one minus one plus zero or negative two. And we do indeed get a negative answer, which agrees with our intuition from the first picture. Remember that our first picture looked like this. And we saw intuitively that it should have a negative divergence at the origin. But our formula is showing that it has a negative divergence actually everywhere. There's no dependence on x, y, and z here. And, and that actually agrees with intuition too. Because if we stick sort of like our, our net bag anywhere else in the picture, then the arrows are bigger going into that circle than they are going out. So there's still a net accumulation of fluid flow, even if we are looking at a point that's not the origin. And net accumulation or net flow into a point means negative divergence. Now let's look at the second example. We want to compute the gradient dotted with f. And that gives us d dx of negative 2y plus d dy of 2x plus d dz of 0. Well, that's just 0 plus 0 plus 0, which gives us a divergence of 0. Once again, that agrees with our intuition. Since this was a vector field where the fluid was flowing around but not into a net around the origin, I'll let you puzzle over your intuition for whether why the divergence is 0 at a point that's not the origin as well. In this video, we defined the divergence of a vector field f as the gradient dotted with f. If f has components p, q, and r, this means that the divergence of f is defined as d dx of p plus d dy of q plus d dz of r. We saw that intuitively divergence of f at a point represents the net fluid flow from the point.